Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's RuTech. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the best $1,500 gaming laptops that you can get in 2022. Now, there's a ton of different $1,500 gaming laptops out there, and it can get pretty confusing if you're not too sure about the CPU, the storage, the RAM, stuff like that. If you're not too familiar with PC specs, yeah, you're not really gonna know which one is gonna get you the best bang for your buck. So for this video, I went through dozens of different $1,500 gaming laptops and found three that'll get you the best bang for your buck. Before I dive straight into it though, first, a quick message. Swift2 is an amazing free professional level PDF editor, which allows you to create, convert, merge, compress, and sign PDF documents in the blink of an eye. It has wonderful, immensely useful features, such as, of course, PDF editing, full conversion capability, so image to PDF, vice versa, PDF to Word or Excel formats, etc. It can quickly compress PDFs with zero quality loss and merge or split PDFs. So if you have two PDFs you're trying to put together or separate into two separate documents, well, SwiftDo has you covered. And that's only a few of the many, many useful features SwiftDo has to offer. It also amazingly only uses up 10 megabytes of disk space. So this is a lightweight program that will run very well on whatever machine configuration you may have. I personally prefer SwiftDo over Adobe Acrobat and really any other PDF editing program. Link for SwiftDo can be found in my description. Now do keep in mind, these laptops are in no particular order. However, I will mention my favorite of the three at the end of the video. All right, so number three, the first laptop I chose, the MSI Pulse GL66. This laptop went on sale in early January of 2022, so it's relatively new. Let's start off with the tech spec. For CPU, it has Intel's latest i7-12700H. This processor is amazing. It has 14 cores, 20 threads, with a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz and boost clock of 4.7. 14 cores, as you would imagine, is phenomenal and is more than enough for high-end gaming. As for the GPU, it has the RTX 3070 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The 3070 is a beast. It can handle 1440p and 4K gaming with ease, especially if you're using DLSS technology. The display on this laptop only outputs 1080p, however, you can use the HDMI out port to get your gaming running on higher res screens if you'd like. Now for RAM, you're getting 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, which is still more than enough for modern gaming. So that's what we're looking at for performance. As expected, $1,500 is gonna get you a total powerhouse that can run absolutely anything at high settings. But what about other things like storage, the display, and the overall design? Well, for storage, you're getting a reasonable 512 gigabytes in an NVMe SSD. 512 gigabytes should be okay for most game libraries, but if it isn't, luckily this laptop does have an additional M2 slot if you ever wanted to add more. Now, it would be really cool if more of these companies threw in an extra one terabyte hard drive just to give gamers extra storage. I'm really not sure why they don't do that. It's really cheap and it gives us a lot more comfort when it comes to installing more games. Now, as for the display, you're getting a 1080p 15.6 inch screen with a 144 hertz refresh rate. Pretty expected in this price range. 144 hertz means your gaming experience will be buttery smooth. Lastly, I wanna talk about the design. In my opinion, it's pretty average. I've never been a fan of gaming themed designs where they kind of try to make the PC look like a Ferrari, but that's just me. Also, that keyboard, it's RGB, so that's a nice little touch. And for cooling, it's also pretty average, but should absolutely get the job done in terms of expected gaming laptop thermals. And for ports, we're looking at two USB 3.0s, one USB 2.0, one USB-C, an Ethernet port, and an HDMI out, so certainly a nice selection of ports. Let's move on to the next laptop, the XPG Z. Xenia 15KC. XPG only recently started emerging in the laptops department, so let's see how they hold up here. First off, let's look at the performance-focused specifications. For the CPU, it's using an 11th gen Intel i7 processor, the i7-11800H, which is an 8-core, 12-thread CPU with a base clock of 2.3 GHz and boost clock of 4.6. Now, this is an 11th gen CPU, whereas the last MSI laptop has a 12th gen, which is slightly more powerful. In the grand scheme of things though, this won't be problematic at all. The i7-11800H is still an incredibly strong processor. Also, there's some other specs in this laptop that kind of make up for it. Moving on for the GPU, it has an RTX 3070 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, so same GPU as the last laptop. And like I said, it can handle high-end gaming like it's nothing. For gaming, this won't be super significant. However, for productivity, it'll be a huge help. If you edit videos, use Photoshop a lot, do some 3D rendering, this 32 gigabytes of RAM will be super, super helpful. So it's kind of a trade-off with this last laptop, right? You get 
a less powerful CPU, but you get a ton more RAM. Now for storage, display, and design, it's also a very big difference. You're getting one terabyte of SSD storage. One terabyte is absolutely enough for the average game library, especially if you're running games like Warzone or Battlefront, which take up a lot of storage. And the display is awesome too. You're getting a 1440p display with a refresh rate of 165 hertz. This is really cool. I actually have never seen a gaming laptop with a 1440p display before making this video. And best of all, the 3070 can most definitely game at 1440p at max settings, so you'll be seeing all of those details in high res. And lastly, the overall design. I think it's pretty nice. The keyboard is not only RGB, but it's also mechanical, believe it or not, so very much gaming focused. The chassis is beefy and straightforward, but there's a good reason for that. It has great cooling. Inside this big brick is a large heatsink with two 90 blade fans. On the side of the laptop, you'll find very large vents that will help maximize your thermal ventilation. And for ports, there's a lot, so buckle in. We're looking at one Thunderbolt 4, which doubles as a USB-C, three USB 3.0s, one HDMI out, one SD card reader, and one Ethernet. And now for the last laptop, I chose the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Now, if you've seen some of my other top three gaming laptops videos, you know that Lenovo usually gets picked as the favorite at the end of the video. So let's see how this one holds up. The Lenovo Legion 5 Pro has a Ryzen 5800H CPU, which is an eight core 16 thread processor with a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz. Now this Ryzen 5800H is actually less powerful than both the CPUs in the last two laptops. Now it's still a high performance chip, but it's not quite as up there in terms of raw power as the Intel 11800H and 12700H. Don't get me wrong though, it will still be able to run absolutely anything with zero problems. As for the graphics card, as you'd expect, it has the RTX 3070, so no difference there. And for the RAM, it has the golden number 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory. So with this PC, you're actually getting the least amount of performance. Now do bear in mind, it's a really marginal amount, but just something to note. As for storage, you're getting a lovely single terabyte, which as I've said, is more than enough even with bigger games. And now let's look at design. This one's pretty unique and I'm actually kind of a fan of it. It isn't too extremely flashy, but it still gets the point across that this machine means business. Also, not the thinnest, but then again, the fatter the PC, the more room it has for ventilation and cooling. Also, this laptop is 16 inches, so it's a little bigger than your typical 15.6 inches that you'd get with most notebooks. Its resolution is 1440p, but it has a screen ratio of 16 by 10, as opposed to the usual 16 by 9. So that means you're getting a resolution of 2560 by 1600 instead of 2560 by 1440. And the refresh rate is 165 hertz, so this display is great for gaming and of course, the keyboard is RGB. Last off, let's take a look at the ports. It has two USB-Cs, four USB-3s, one HDMI out, and one Ethernet port. So those are the three laptops. They have a lot of differences, but they're still getting you a lot of features for your money. But which of these three will get you the absolute best bang for your buck? It's really not an easy answer. Um, these three laptops are all really great in their own regards, but if I absolutely had to pick one, I'd have to go with the XPG Xenia 15, and here's why. For starters, performance, you're rocking a 3070 with an i7-11800H. There's nothing you will have trouble running. You're also getting 32 gigabytes of RAM. XPG totally could have gotten away with only giving you 16, but they went the whole nine yards and gave you 32 with this laptop. Also, of course, one terabyte of storage is great and the design is also very impressive. You not only get a built-in mechanical RGB keyboard, but you also get a 1440p 165 hertz screen. Also, this PC has great cooling, so, And yeah, that will wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below or join my Discord. You can find the link in my pinned comment. And if you enjoy the content you're seeing, please do subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.